lesson 1.1 exercises video. What I will do is go over um, a few exercises from the material in lesson 1.1, which is lines and slope and equations of lines. And these exercises come from the OpenStax pre-calculus 2E. Um, the link is here and you should try them before you watch the video. I have the exercises listed. We will go over here. After you've tried them, then you can continue to watch and you can see the solutions discussed. So here we go. In 2.1, numbers 42, 43, and 44, we are given a graph of a line. We're asked to write the equation for the line. Now, um, we're actually given, you see both the x-intercept and the y-intercept of this one. So maybe for this first example, 42, I won't count boxes because um, I don't need to. I'll do that in the next two problems. So note that we are given the y-intercept, which is 0, 5, or b equals 5. This is the y-intercept. And then we are also given 4, 0. This is the x-intercept. And so the slope, which is change in y over change in x, we can take, say, 5 minus 0 divided by 0 minus 4. And we see we have negative 5 over 4 as our slope. Well, because we're given here, as I mentioned, this is the, the B information and the MX plus B form of an equation of a line. We could just write it down. So we have the slope, we have the intercept, B equals five. So we have Y equals minus five over four X plus five. This is my answer. This is one answer. You could also write in point slope form using a different point on the line, but this is perfectly fine. Number 43, here, well, we can see the y-intercept. Um, the graph has 0, 3. This is the y-intercept. And so in particular, the b will be 3 in my equation. But I need a slope, and I can use slope-intercept form. But the difference with this one and the last one is here. It's not so clear the x-intercept, but we can count boxes. So you notice if I start counting, maybe I will do this in blue. If I go down one, two, three, four to here. Now that's down. And so this says that delta y is negative four. And then I go over two, one, two, and this is positive. Delta X is two. And so my slope, which is change in Y over change in X, well, this is minus four over two. My slope is negative two. So um, because I have the intercept and I have a slope, I will use slope intercept form. This is minus two X plus three. This will be the answer I report back. 44, I will do very similarly, but you notice 43 has negative slope. And just looking at the graph, 44 better have positive slope. That's what we see. This line is increasing and we should get a positive slope here. So you notice, first of all, we have this intercept, um, which is zero, negative one. This is the y-intercept. And so in my slope intercept form, of the equation of this line, my b will be negative 1. Now for the slope, I want change in y over change in x. And um, maybe, let's see, I have some choices. Maybe I will do delta x is 2, as I did in the last one. Go over 2. And this will be delta x is 2. And then. The point that it will intersect on the line is right here. 
So it's going from negative one up to y equals five. This will be delta y is six. Delta y is six. And so the ratio change in y over change in x is six over two, which is three. And so this is my slope, positive three. And in slope intercept form, once again, we have y is 3x minus 1. This is my answer. Now we have some more. Um, I like this first one, the g of x is 2x plus 4. That way of writing the line is this function notation I talked about at the very end of the lesson. But um, we want to find the x and y intercepts for each line in 13 and in 16. Well, 13 is written of the form mx plus b, and I will write them as sort of ordered pairs. So first we can just read off the y-intercept. Um, we see b is 4 here, so the y-intercept is 0, comma 4. That is a point on the graph. But the x-intercept, how do we do this, right? That is not something I talked about specifically in the lesson video. Well, the, the y-intercept is where a graph hits the y-axis, and the x-intercept would be where it hits the x-axis. In a particular, y is 0. And so you can just set g of x. So y value 0, what is x? That is what we are asking for here. When y is 0, what is x? So we just solve here. We get um, 2x is negative 4. And then divide, we get x equals negative 2. My x-intercept as a point is minus 2, comma, 0. Now 16, we don't need to. Um, convert this to slope intercept form to read off the y intercept, we can remember fundamentally what each one of these are. Um, when x is zero, we get the y intercept. And when y is zero, wherever it happens to be, we get the x intercept. So just set x to be zero, we get 5y is 20. And then we get y is 4. So my y-intercept, this is 0, comma, 4. For the x-intercept, we just set y to 0, very much as we did in number 13. It's just this equation looks different than looking at it with this function notation. So when we set y to 0, we get negative 2x is 20. And we can just divide by negative 2 we get x equals negative 10. And so the x-intercept as a point, well, x is negative 10 and y is zero. And I will underline both of these two. Our next exercise, number 18, this has to do with having two points on a line, finding the slope, but also the ideas of parallel and perpendicular, which we discussed in the lesson. So what I'm going to do is find the slope of line one, find the slope of line two, and then we will answer the question about parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Slope of line one, change in y over change in x. You can label them y1, y2, x1, y1, x2, y2. I will just take, say, the first two to be x1, y1, and the second two to be x2, y2. So I have minus 24 minus 6 divided by 3 minus 0. You notice this is negative 30 over 3, so I have negative 10. Now let's figure out the slope of line two. Well, once again, I have change in y over change in x. We just have two different points. 
This is negative 71 minus 19 divided by eight minus minus one. Well, the denominator, maybe I will take one step here before I write my final answer. The denominator is positive nine. And then the numerator, you notice we have negative 90. So we have negative 90 over nine. This is negative 10. Well, now we can answer the other part of the question. The lines are parallel because they have the same slope. So the lines are parallel. Parallel lines have the same slope. So this is the other part of this question. 26, write an equation for a line perpendicular to this, and then passing through the point negative four, negative one. This is really similar to one that we did in the lesson video. Um, I guess one minor difference is we're looking at this using this function notation, but you see this is really given in slope intercept form, this equation. Okay, so what do we need to remember before we begin? Well, the slopes of perpendicular lines, perpendicular lines have product negative one, or if you know the slope of one, then you take negative reciprocal and get the slope of the other. So here, this line, a slope negative two. The line I am interested in will have slope positive one half, right? You take negative reciprocal. The reciprocal of negative two is negative a half, and then you take negative of that. This is the slope of the line I'm interested in. And then a point on this line is negative four, negative one. And it does not specify how to leave my equation, so I will just leave it in point slope form. I have y minus y1 is m x minus x1, where, for example, y minus minus 1, this is just y plus 1, or x minus minus 4 is x plus 4, right? I have used that here. So this is my answer. You can certainly convert that to slope intercept if you wanted to. 28. This one is a little different, but it's a great exercise. Um, we want to find the point at which the line f of x is negative 2x minus 1 intersects the line g of x is negative x. And both of these are written with function notation. Well, there's a few ways we can do this. First, I'm going to graph the two, and then I'll talk about doing this algebraically as well. So f of x is a line, and you can see the y-intercept is negative one, and the slope is negative two. Negative two is, say, negative two over one. Change in y over change in x. So if you go over one, down two, over one, down two, like this, or you can go um, up two and then backward one, up two, backward one. All of those are points on this line. Let me draw a few in. Here, 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 here. Then I can connect with a straight line. This in pink is f of x. Now let's graph g of x. Well, you see the intercept is zero. My slope is negative one, which means we go say um, over one, down one here, over one, down one, over one, down one, all of these points. We connect these points with a line. We can see visually it's here at the intersection of these two graphs occurs at, well, x equals negative one, y equals positive one, and check. Evaluate this at negative one minus, minus one is positive one. Evaluate this at negative one, we get 
positive two minus one, which is one. Okay, so that was, we have the answer. We are, has solved the question, but um, it's not always so visually clear. For instance, what if they crossed somewhere in here, not on a uh, tick mark? So another way you could do this, this would work more generally if you're trying to solve where two generally functions, but here we just have lines are equal. Well, you notice the X's are equal and also the Y's are equal. You just set these two equal, the Y values. So, or algebraically, and then we can solve for X. So we set these two equal and you will do this a lot in calculus one and calculus two. For example, set two curves equal and solve for X. And here, let's see if I add minus two X to both sides, I get negative one is minus X plus two X. I get that X equals negative one. And then you can really evaluate either one to get the Y value. So we see here minus one, and then say g of minus one is negative, negative one. As I was verbally saying a few moments ago, this is positive one. So this is another way to do it. You know, we got the same answer. Of course, it's the intersection point, but I wanted to talk about two different ways to do this problem because they're both wonderful ways to think about the problem. So this is the end of the exercises I will work through for this lesson. Thank you so much.